Hey, you all. It's Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I create this channel to provide light and love. How you all doing? I'm doing good. I got a good one today. It is time to raise our self-esteem. Did you all hear me? Women, ladies, it is time to raise our self-esteem. Girl. All righty now. I want to talk about this because it's alarming. It's troubling. It's concerning the things I hear that women do. What gives me the right to speak on this? I'm a licensed social worker. I'm a therapist. But I also have had low self-esteem. I can't say I have it a lot, but I had it recently. I mean, it, it happens. So none of us are immune to it. Men have it too. Young teenage boys have it too. Young girls have it too. Older women have it too. Older men have it too. People have low self-esteem. Men can mask it more. They, they portray themselves to be more confident than some women. Women do the comparison thing. I even hear it in my younger girls that I work with at school. I'm a school counselor and I work with sixth, seventh, eighth graders and I'll hear them say, I look better than her anyway. That, see, that's part of, I'm not saying they have low self-esteem, but as more mature women, we know you don't need to compare yourself with somebody saying you look better. It's so irrelevant. So irrelevant. We got to remember this. It's never about another woman. It's only about you, boo. I learned that from 25 years ago from my God sister. It's never about another woman. It's only about you, honey. It's only. So there's no need to compare or put down because it's only about you. It's your show. Like I always tell people, this is Tammy and Sharice Walker show. It's my show. So yeah, it's your show. Remember that. Re keep saying that too. Not to be cocky or arrogant, but when you believe in yourself, you have confidence in yourself, you never, you never have to sit and measure and compare yourself with another person. It's almost silly anyway. Think about it. How can I compare myself with my friends? How? How can I? Most of my, some of my friends are married. Uh, they have kids. I don't. I have education. Some do, some don't. I'm whatever size I am. They're a different size. We grew up differently. Some of us, it's no way to compare because we are like, you know, I'm not saying we like night and day, but we're so different in some ways. It's just silly. Comparison is the thief of joy. Yet and still, we do it all over social media. We do it all over in person. We sit up there trying to make cracks at people because we're insecure and jealous. And insecurity is one of the nastiest emotions you can ever own. It's just disgusting. Insecurity and jealousy and envy. Oof. Before I do all that, hit subscribe, hit like, share. Let me get on into a self-esteem. I'm taking this from an article. It is by marriage.com. I like to follow articles because as you all see, I go off on tangents. I ramble. So this keeps me a little more focused and it gives me like some good statistics to follow and prompts. Marriage.com written by Sylvia Smith. This is the article. Author of this article. It was created January 30th, 2024, clinically approved by Mert Seeker. He is a psychologist. So that means he approved what she wrote. Let me find self-esteem encompasses an individual's sense of worth, abilities, and self-confidence involving valuing and respecting one's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. It reflects positive self-perception and is linked to understanding, accepting, and appreciating one's intrinsic, intrinsic worth. When I was a life coach, still am, one of the things I really focused on was trying to encourage someone to use their own power. All of us have it inside of us. You have to tap into it, but we all possess it. Strong self-esteem enhances coping with challenges, fosters healthy relationships, and boosts overall life satisfaction, making it crucial for psychological and emotional well-being. So when your self-esteem is low, let's just talk about this. Where are you guys? Now, we got to remember, sometimes low self-esteem can be hormonal changes in the female brain. That could be like low estrogen and low progesterone. 
So that's, you know, that's fair. If it's that, that's not our fault. And, you know, as women, we go through a lot with hormones and, you know, menstrual cycles, having a baby. It's a lot. It's a lot to be a lady. We're not just a pretty face. We're not just anybody. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of statistics. Statistics show that almost 70% of women are ready to take pills to attain an ideal body weight. 90% of females feel increasingly sensitive before the start of their period. What about people like me whose period was taken away after I got sick with breast cancer in my late 30s? So imagine how I felt. I went through a lot of hormonal changes, hot flashes. I really had a tough time for a couple of years during that time. 74% of girls say they feel pressure to please. Look at that. Girls and women have 90% of all of the eating problems. 53% 53% of young girls have body images, body image issues growing up. As I told you all, when I was growing up, I was super, super, super thin. I was flat as a boy in my chest. I always had a butt, I always had legs, but I was super thin. And the guys ridiculed me. And, and you know, they'd be like, do you eat? You look like you come from Ethiopia. Thanks be to God for my parents or something, something God, because I did not have low self-esteem. But the way they dogged me out, I should have. And when I started going to the picnics now and over the last prior years, the guys are, hell, you fine, you thick. And it's like one guy, I told him, I said, stop talking to me because you were very mean to me when we were in high school. Do I sound damaged? But I had to let him know, you're all in my face now, but you used to ridicule me. He was like, I did. One thing about you men, you sure get amnesia. You remember what you did. They probably don't remember. He probably so busy bullying people. Let's hit it. This is one sign of low self-esteem, low confidence. Confidence and self-esteem have a symbolic relationship. One thrives on another. It follows that low self-esteem. I don't know what they're trying to say. It follows that low self-esteem will lead to a lack of confidence. They're saying if you have low self-esteem, you're going to have low confidence. Low self-esteem will hamper a woman from moving ahead in life. This will manifest as lacking signs of a confident woman. So when you have low self-esteem, honey, this is not no love thing only. People always go straight to relationship, straight to, no, baby, this is throughout your life. When you have low self-esteem, you take slop, you take slop, you take crap. Give me an example. This is a lady with, let me give you some examples. Low self-esteem. They walk into a car dealership. People looking around. They don't want to help you. This happens. You go into college dealerships, people act like you don't matter. And they go around begging somebody to help them buy a car. No, baby. I go at a car dealership. You don't come and approach me. I go at your door because I'm not going to beg you to spend my money. Most of the time I already have a nice car. So that's high self-esteem. You deserve the utmost respect. You are in there to purchase a car. They should treat you with care. Same with your doctor. Say with your dentist, nothing's going to be perfect, but you deserve good treatment. You go get your hair done, the hairstylist or whoever receptionist, however it's set up, they need to acknowledge you. She should not be booking your appointment for 11 a.m. and don't get to you till 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. You have too much to do to be sitting in somebody's salon earning up time. High self-esteem women know, "Uh uh-uh, baby, I don't have two hours to wait. Now, we did that in the 80s, we know no better, 90s. But now we're smarter. Don't do that. You deserve the best. You already know in relationships, high self-esteem is needed. A man always knows. A man always knows. Ask your brothers and your friend, your uh, male friends. They can look at a lady and tell that lady got low self-esteem. That lady don't play. Trust and believe. They know from how you carry yourself. It's a certain aura and energy and stance and posture you give off. It's just, it's just, you can't, it's unexplainable. In, in the words of Lisa Stansfield, you can't deny it, baby. It's just there. It's just there. I can't explain what it is. They know desperation. They know a loose woman. They do. Trust and believe. Ask around. They're going to tell you. She right. She right. Okay. So let's see. I already read that. I don't know why they're saying that again. weird. Okay. They saying low self-esteem means withdrawing from interactions. Maybe um, it's an upcoming ladies book club 
or something being organized by your friends and you don't want to go. Withdrawing from social gatherings could be a sign of low self-esteem. Eh, I don't know. I, I guess. Me personally, a little bit more seasoned. Sometimes I'm getting to a point. I don't like being at events when I don't know anybody. It's kind of like a bore for me. I'm not going to be sitting there looking around, trying to make conversations. Sometimes you go to these events, people are not friendly. So I don't know. I'm not real gung-ho on going to a lot of stuff anymore where I don't know people. It's just kind of boring to me um, the last few times. So I don't know if I agree with number two. But if you do do that, try to push through and go to these events. Don't, don't not go because you feel inferior. Inferior. <laughs> that again, it's kind of going back to that comparison. As women, some of us, we tend to compare ourselves with celebrities or our friends, our cousins, our sisters. If someone you know, they're married, they have kids and you don't, we can compare like, why did they, why did they, why are they married? What's wrong with me? Don't ever do that. I don't know. Just some people say nothing never go right for me. Everybody else wins. Yeah, don't do that because it's like you you putting it into the atmosphere. That's why I don't speak about being broke or I don't say nothing good don't happen for me. See, it's, it's so much power in those, those lips, teeth and tongue, power of the tongue. And when you speak that stuff, it becomes a belief. You have to believe that I am worthy. I always get what I deserve in this life and desire. You have to believe in God, have faith. You have to. Um, have affirmations and whatever it takes for you. Everybody different. I signed up here on my in my office. Good things are coming my way. I love the vibration of it. Pardon me, you all. Always. Uh, I could sit here for 12,000 hours and nobody will call as soon as I do a video. Sorry, you all should have had that watch off. But anyway, my, my saying is good things are coming my way. I love the vibration of it. And you got to believe that. If you believe, you shall receive. Okay? Getting hostile. I want to tell you all this, and I'm, I'm just being honest. Before I became a therapist, I, I don't want to say I was biased, but I used to really think men were some of the reasons, or a lot of the reasons for relationship troubles. As I see couples now, women. It's bad, you all. The attitude, the disrespect, talking down to their husband or, or boyfriend or fiance. It's not cute. It's it's bad. It's really bad, you all. And so, and defensive, very defensive. And so maybe some of you that's watching might say, Well, you don't know what I dealt with. Well, you don't well, you have to take responsibility. If you're dealing with a toxic guy and you gotta get jiggy with him and curse him out, your blood pressure through the roof, and you stay anxious and upset then you got to check yourself. Why are you with that type of guy? I was in an abusive situation over 20 some years ago. I went to therapy and my therapist at the time said, Tammy, give yourself 50%. I'm like, no, oh, man. I'm like, what's she talking about? I'm being abused. She's talking about give myself 50%, but I chose to stay. So I don't know. I no longer spend my time or I'm not in relationships with people that throw stuff at me, curse me out, or try to use me for money. They only got me for money one time. I got, I'm, a, I'm a quick study. You ain't going to get my money too much. But it happened in one relationship. And it, it's never happened again. Because I learned you don't never want no guy to get you for your money. That's the worst. But being hostile. Being overly defensive about, about something. To the point of getting aggressive. Is another telltale sign of low self-esteem. Fear of getting perceived inadequate or exposed is one of the signs. That a woman has low self-esteem, always upset. To me, always crying and stuff. I just talked about that today, crying and emotional and all upset. I'm not saying be a hard, you know what, or don't be like me. I know I'm a bit jaded, but, you know, I'm different. I went through cancer. When you go through an illness like that, it can kind of mess up your emotions a little bit. I'm not saying I don't cry because I'm still a crier, but I'm not going to cry for manipulation or try to get no man to do stuff. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, if you are this person that's always hostile, what are you mad at? What are you depressed over? Or what are you upset over? And you must meditate or journal and get a hold of your emotions. That's one of the complaints of a, that man, men have about us. We have bad attitudes. 
And they, they okay, think about it. If you want to get married or you want to be in a long term relationship, a man's not going to sign up to be with a hostile woman. That's not attractive. Um, men want healthy men now. When I say men, don't don't start talking about no toxic stuff. We don't do that on this channel. Healthy men want to come home to their boo thing, to their sweetheart. It's peaceful in the house. You and them, you and them, maybe you have kids, you you laugh and it's fun. Yes, you're gonna have challenges. That goes without saying, but ultimately he wants to walk into a peaceful environment. And I'm I'm the same way. I don't want no drama. I don't want no drama now. So if you if you are this person that's hostile, this is something you need to work on. And and ask yourself, man, why am I so mad? Is it something that's in my family? Because I see it where mama mad, grandma mad, auntie's mad, and it jumps onto the lady. But you don't have to be like that because they're like that. Feeling of losing control. When a woman has low self-esteem, she has no control. She feels as if she has no control. As if she lacks power over herself and her surroundings. This can create a sense of instability and she feels very unanchored. One thing good women want is security, but when we don't have control. It can really affect us. And if your esteem is low, you're not going to be in control because having high self-esteem means you're going to be able to strategize. Okay, I want to buy a house. Someone with high self-esteem can get that done. Okay, I need to pay down these bills and save. High self-esteem lady going to do that. Oh, I don't want no house. I'm going to give me a luxury apartment. High self-esteem is going to go find her one. Low self-esteem is not even going to think she deserved one. High self-esteem. I want to lose weight. She's going to go and get her a personal trainer. or She's going to jump online, find her a dietary plan and a workout plan. Low self-esteem is going to complain and say, I can't lose no weight. Man, I'm thick. Men like thick girls. And they do. They do. So I'm just saying the difference of someone will have high self-esteem, someone with low self-esteem. High self-esteem woman, when she goes for her job interview, she is going to ask for 95 through 105,000. Low self-esteem is going to say, well, he said he pays 80, so that's what I'll take. You always ask for more. High self-esteem lady go start her own company. So those are some of the examples. Substance abuse, definitely low self-esteem. Definitely smoking a lot of weed, smoking a lot of cigarettes, you know, people smoke cigarettes anymore. They seem played out. But drinking, even like different type of drugs, because a woman with high self-esteem, she started popping my hands. <laughs> woman with high self-esteem, she um, is very particular about her body. That's one thing. High self-esteem, high expectations, high standards. And part of having high self-esteem is, is make sure your body right. You want your skin to be right. You want your body to be right and you're careful about what you intake. Notice that somebody that works out a lot that has high self-esteem, they are going to be particular about their diet and what they take. They're not going to be doing a bunch of drugs. Usually when somebody does drugs, their self-esteem is in the toilet or something or they just have an addiction. But it's, it's, it is a connection there. I do agree with them. The habit catches on as a support for their low self-esteem. It then becomes a challenge to kick. Some people turn to marijuana or drugs, heavier drugs, when they are down and out. They they don't have any money, and they're like, "I'm just gonna, you know, take this drug to feel better." Or they drink a lot because maybe something didn't work out with them and their their person, and they go, they turn to liquor. So usually, what's right turn to liquor is not during good times. Low self esteem. See nothing about your problems. I just said that. Women with low self-esteem often get stuck within themselves. There is an overriding feeling that they had they got a bad deal. Didn't I say that? In everything. I don't know why I had to end up with them parents. They hope they was horrible. And that's fair. That's fair. Nobody asked to be here. And when you get dealt a hand with some crappy parents, that's well, not fair out the gate. So I, I don't make light of stuff like that. I, I understand. But then they take it on. No man, don't, I'll never end up with no good man. These men ain't nothing. Then they talk about their job. I can't stand these jobs. I've been trying to get a promotion for years. They will not promote me. I know somebody kind of like that. Well, why are you still here? At some point, you got to take accountability. I don't never get things my way. It's always hard for me. Think about your life. Is that your whole life that has been that way? Is it that way because that's how you talk? Trust me, you all. I could be negative by 
habit. Like they say, sometimes Virgos can be pessimistic, but you got to turn it around. You got It's all about how you think. Trust and believe. I know my credentials. I know my education. I know my personality. I know my professionalism. I'm not perfect, but I pay my dues. So I think highly of myself because it's going to be, I'm going to be hard pressed to go and convince an organization to hire me as a clinical, licensed clinical social worker, a man, somebody in leadership or management, which is really the next phase for me. Or And I'm going to start my own practice in a, in a few weeks, hopefully, preferably. So I have to have self-confidence and self high self-esteem. It's going to be hard for me to convince somebody to come work under me. Or I'm going to tell somebody, I have my own practice. And I'm like, I have my own practice. I'm telling you, walk all shriveled down. You have to know. You have to own it and rock it. You got to see above your problems. You got to go over the problems. If they low, you get under. If they wide, you get around it. Can't get over it. Can't go under it. Can't go around it. You plow straight through that sucker. You don't never give up. Ever. So this not only pushes them into self-pity mode, but it stops them from empathizing with others. Have you seen people like that? Their life bad, so they don't care about nobody else. She thinks she got problems. I don't care. She should be me for a day. I got way more problems than her. She ain't seen no good. It's like they're so jaded. They don't even have empathy anymore. There are many people out there who are in worse situations. Reach out to them. Who knows? Your self-esteem may get a flip once your perspective changes. I don't know what some of these words are. They're kind of like misspell. I'm trying to. So, yeah, sometimes we do. We forget that somebody don't have shoes. If somebody don't have running clean water, if somebody, they cannot pay their light bill, they cannot pay their gas bill, somebody cannot put gas in their car, somebody is unemployed, unemployment has ran out, they don't have no support system. And that's one thing we got to remember. When things are bad, if you have two or three people, one or two or three people that will help you and that's rallying around you, your support system is huge. I would not have gotten through having breast cancer that first time and second time without the type of people in my circle. I mean, they, they rallied around me. Even people that wasn't like that close to me was like calling me. I had one guy text me every day to say something encouraging. We wasn't like best friends or nothing. It's just God. It really is. Overly sensitive to criticism. Woo, boy, when they have low self-esteem, you can't say nothing. Ooh, I'm kind of, I don't like criticism sometimes. Too. Nah, somebody said I take it well. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, they're going to have that trait. This fact escapes those who have low self-esteem. They tend to react negatively and personally to criticism. And sometimes criticism can change our life for the better. When somebody really tells us about ourselves, and we're like, you know what? After, after you become unoffended, you think and you're like, mm, that could be true. What can I do to fix that? So sometimes... We shouldn't feel so negative about people being critical, especially if they're trying to help us. Oh, low self-esteem, they definitely feel embarrassed to ask for help. Some people are fake. You know, um, all due respect, fake people. They, they want to put on this image. Like, I got it all together and they're drowning. And if they had to just ask, someone would help them. A lot of times people want to help you. But if you have low self-esteem, you're too proud to ask. I don't want to ask nobody. I don't want them thinking lowly of me. They want to help you a lot of times, but you're drowning. This is a sure sign of low self-esteem. Such women feel embarrassed to seek help. It may be as simple as finding their way or support about office work. Yeah. They think others would think less of them or consider them incompetent. Honey, baby, the only stupid question is one unasked. I ask a billion questions. I will ask my manager. I would text my manager, I would call my manager, and I would call my supervisor if I don't know something. Now, I've been with my job for a minute, so it doesn't happen often. I have coworkers, and we all are at our different schools, counselors. And honey, I would text one of them coworkers or call one of them coworkers or email one of them coworkers before you could say boo to the who. Why sit there and do something incorrectly when I could have had an answer? It just don't make no sense. And I was the same way in college. And that's what they told me when I got my master's degree, my, my professor. She said, Tammy, please, when I first signed up for my MSW, she said, please ask questions. Students that do bad in this program, they don't ask questions. They're, you know, and they just sit there and they mess up and they don't say anything. They fail because they don't ask questions. Honey, I was texting my, my professor left and right. 
I'm not going to not know what to do. They want to help you. Remember that. Fear, fearing failure. <laughs> Sometimes our failure is our biggest lessons. And even with relationships, we feel bad. I know I do. I hate, I hate breaking up, especially somebody I, I really love. You know, um, I had some breakups and it, it's been a blessing. A lot of them been a blessing. But I learned from those relationships. Some of those times when I was in relationships, I was so unhealthy and they had drama and I had drama and I take blame for some of that. I'm like, you wasn't in a good place. So, you know, we fear failure, but failure, it teaches us. Experience is a teacher. If you go to a job, and you absolutely hate it and you have a very negative manager, you're going to learn next time. Try to look if you have a negative manager in the interview. Sometimes you could tell. I could tell if I interview with somebody I don't like, I'm like, I don't want to work for them. Because why make your life miserable? Or if you're at a job and you say you're there 15 years and you did not up your skills. When you're somewhere for a lot of years, you have to continue to learn new software. And I've noticed that some people just sit there. I had a, a former coworker. Stayed at a job 20 years. She was making all kinds of errors. She just was like, just kind of in a low vibration place at that job. And I knew she was not happy. She was just going through the motions and they fired her. And you should not get fired after 20 years when she could have moved around in that big old company and tried to do some different stuff. She just st stayed there and just kept doing the same old thing, making errors. And it's like, don't do that. That's what I'm saying. Fearing failure. Don't worry about failing. You got you to gotta try to change your life. You may fail. Do you know how many people start a new business and fail? But eventually they're going to catch on. But if they started their business, now they know how to start another one. So it's not really, it's not all failures. It's lessons learned. That's how I view things that don't turn out right. But when they have low self-esteem, they go about thinking they will not succeed. Even before they start, I'm not going to pass this test probably not going to get into law school. What type of way is that to think? There is a constant internal conversation about failure. Situa failure situation. You are priming yourself for adverse outcomes. You, you, you failing before you start. Whew. No self-esteem. People go out their way to unplease people. They are insuring themselves and they lack any opinion. Whew. That's the worst thing you could do. Have you ever seen somebody, they'll have a problem, they'll ask 12 people. I used to do that back in the day. I have a problem with my um, boyfriend. What should I do? What should I do? Then I go get like seven opinions. And then I don't know what to do because everybody has something different. And like my uncle said, when I had my breakup a few years ago, he said, don't talk to people, Tammy. They're going to give you advice based on how they were when they broke up. He said, it's not going to be, it's not going to be good advice. My uncle nailed that. It is so true. Um, let me see if I can read this without my glasses on. Probably not. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I got this big old box here. Sorry, y'all. All righty. So they're saying some of the reasons for low self-esteem. Insecure childhood with overcritical guardians. That's so true. If you have parents that was like, you, you get an A. Why you didn't get an A plus? Or if you get a B, why you didn't get an A? Um, it could cause a low self-esteem because you're feeling like you're doing your best and your best is never enough. God requires our best. If your best is a B, fuck it out. Don't let nobody make you feel you have to be perfect. And sometimes our parents, they mess us up. I don't think no good parent sets out to say, oh, I'm going to mess Terry up for today. They want to do well. They want to do good. Sometimes our parents are stressed out. Sometimes they have addictions. Sometimes their parents didn't teach them well, or, you know, it, it's a tough job. It's, it's books out there, but each child is, is different. And I'm sure parents, good ones, try their best, but sometimes they mess us up, don't they? I'm got a whole office full talking about. I'm not making light of it because I, I have some things my parents mess me up over too. Okay. Um, sometimes people have low um, self-esteem. This is a good one. Suboptimal performance in school leading to comparison. I wasn't a straight A student in, in high school. I did much better in college, but I, I graduated early. I started uh, high school at 13. I graduated early and I was never that great in math. So I struggled in math. 
But, you know, my sister, she, she is awesome in math. And we were together in the same grade. But my, my math grades was never as good as hers. Now I'm excellent in English and reading. Can't tell, huh? <laughs> but, yeah, I am. And, yeah, don't compare yourself with nobody else. You're the one and only. And then if you are bad in school, say you're watching my video or you're in college, get a tutor. Or now would uh, YouTube University I actually use YouTube sometimes when I was getting my MSW, like for statistics. It helped me. But they have tutors. They have workbooks. They have all kinds of stuff to help you. So all of us learn different. Some of us are visual learners. That's what I am. Don't beat yourself up if you're not an A student. It's okay. It is okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Dealing with medical issues can hurt your self-esteem. You know, I went through breast cancer twice. I had a mastectomy. I don't talk about that too much. But with the radical plastic surgery they have now, you can get yourself back to, you know, you know, decent looking. Thank God for that. I had to be bald without my hair um, twice. It was really humbling, I would say. Um, you know, wigs are popular. And I wore wigs, so it, it worked out. But yeah, being having medical conditions like lupus and sickle cell and diabetes, that could cause low self-esteem, you know, and my heart goes out. That's where you get those support groups in www.psychologytoday.com. Put in your zip code and find you a therapist. It's hard to deal, deal with medical issues by yourself. Don't do that alone. Get the support. Being in a bad relationship woo, 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 can destroy a woman's self-esteem like nothing else. If you are in an abusive relationship and you get out of it or you stay in it either way, it, it, it just it jacks your self-esteem up because you know, you and I know, we deserve better than to be hit on or stuff thrown at us or cursed out. We are not no bitch. We not no hoe. And we not no mf -er and all the other things that we can be called. And that does a number on you. And you start believing that. And I tell people to this day, when I got away from the abusive marriage, I dreamed that that guy was chasing me for 20 years. And that, that tells you the PTSD that abuse does. 20 years of this dream that will pop up and I'm running. And that, that don't make no kind of sense. So again, if you're in a bad relationship, I don't make light of abuse. You have to do it safely. I want you to get some help, www.psychologytoday.com. Wherever you are, type in domestic violence shelters for your backup plan. Hopefully your computer will erase it. They have it now where you go to those sites and it'll re-erase it. So in case the abuser jumps on after you, they won't even know you looked that up. Keep a bag in your car and get a safety plan sheet of who you can contact. God forbid, if something happens, you can call them and tell them you're in trouble if you choose to stay. Because I know people might leave a domestic violence marriage or a relationship. They may leave and come back seven times before they finally leave. But the key is to leave and to leave alive, leave safely. Okay, you are. I don't, I don't take that lightly. People who have mental illness, you know, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, one, one day they're up, one day they're down. It's out of their control. But they have great medication to help you. And you have to use your medication so you can stay more stable. Because you know that's going to affect your self-esteem if you're not mentally stable. I hate to see uh, women go through this type of stuff. You know, they, they know these guys are not up to snuff. They just meet a guy. They move, they're moving the guy in. They're giving them keys to their car. They are giving money to men or paying for trips. And why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? You go on one date and you're, you're wondering, is he the one? Is he the one? Is he the one for what? You just met him. So when you know you're doing some of this stuff I'm naming, you do need support. Don't be ashamed. I think it's a lot of shame that goes with having low self-esteem. But why are you telling people, like if you're in therapy, just just do it. You could do a lot of something. Some of my clients do it from the car. You could do it from your your job. Probably if you work remote, just take out that time and do the work on yourself. But don't get out there dating when you know your self-esteem is really bad. I had somebody many years ago, an old friend. I was like, girl, why are you putting up with this guy? I mean, the guy was just doing her so wrong on so many levels. And I think she went back and told that guy, too, because 
at first it was like, you know how you know somebody, then you might say hi to tell you someone so hi. You know, if I'm if I'm cool with my different friends, tell blah 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 hi. They're their husband or their boyfriend. That's only respect. You know, I'm not gonna sit there and talk to your woman and don't be like, tell, you know, especially once I've known for years. And after a while, I don't think he said hi back. I said, This damn dummy. You, you all said she probably not told this man what I said because you know, you have girl talk, and sometimes you know your friend in trouble bad. And they come to you and say, girl, he did this, he did that. And then you might, then they'll say, what would you do if that was you? I'm, because I'm not the one to say, girl, why are you putting up with that? If I was you, I would leave. I don't do that. If you're in an abusive situation, I'm going to open my mouth and say, girl, I'm concerned about you. Do you have a plan to get out of there? That's my duty. That's my duty to warn. I'm a friend. But I'm not going to, I don't tell people, like, if they're in a bad marriage or something, I'm not talking about abuse, and the guy suck, you know, you, you know he sucked. That's your man. So I'm not going to tell them, girl, why you marry him? Girl, if I was you, I wouldn't put up with that. I don't say that because I'm going to tell you what. They're going to go back and tell them and they're going to turn on you. It's always going to be a turn on you. So I just try to keep my mouth closed. It slipped out. It slipped out a couple of times. Woo, they was offended. Mm, and that's not true. He not like that. I'm like, girl, you know what I'm saying? You know what you got now. So we, we play ourselves small, but we very, very, very sharp. We very smart. We know when we have low self-esteem. We know when we're doing too much. We know what we desire. And the fear, the fear of not getting that is what's causing these women to do these extreme things. Why are you giving somebody a key in two weeks? Why are you on, on the website looking for a date real desperately? Why? I'm not saying don't date online. Do what you want. It's not for me. I don't like it. But if you do it, do it safely. You know, you go online, tell your friend where you're going, get his license plate. Don't, don't, don't do stuff that can cause you harm. Then you sleeping with men, you know they cheating on you. Don't you worry about a venereal disease, STD, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. <laughs> y'all, y'all gotta be careful out here. It don't make no kind of sense. And if you end up with syphilis, when you go date again, you have to announce that to the, your new person. So, you know, it's not worth it, you all. When you put a man on a pedestal and you put him before your health, you need to get your head checked. And I'm not saying that to be mean, but I feel like my channel is a channel of truth and love and light. I'm in my 50s, you all. I'm not going to keep telling you all my age, but I've been around, not like around the block like that, but I've been around and I learned a lot. And I, I've been on dating sites. I was, oh, you are 2000 something. Your girl was a mess. Typing away, meeting guys. I have a guy for three months. You dump him, give me a new one. I have a new, if this was 2002 or one, I have me a new guy by tomorrow. Just the point blank, in the words of Tony Gass, period. Because that's how I would, I would have me a new guy tomorrow. And dating was nothing to me. It was just fun and hey, hey. But I was like 30, 31, 32. And that's what I did. It was a different day, but didn't make it right. Never, never got the one, never got engaged. I'm divorced. I've been, I got married when I was in my 20, lower 20s. I'm divorced. But all that dating I did on the line, I didn't never get no ring or engaged or nothing. Bunch of junk. Junk, you all. You know how the junkyard? Junk. And then God bless you, man, because I'm sure you all was good enough. But I was a mess, too. I was junk, too. So, hey, we was junk together. Take out time, you all, and, and get to know yourself. And I know you all hate hearing all this stuff. Like, eh, that's why they talk about self-love. Baby, it's, it's real talk. And like today was Mother's Day. You know, um, I lost my mom 12 years ago. I don't really, I don't jive with Mother's Day that much. But I cleaned my apartment. I slept late, which I feel real rejuvenated because I got some good sleep. And I went to Target like I always do. I just had to get paper towels and tissue and my call, my pods for my Keurig and, you know, get ready for the work week. Um, but I've been on the phone a little bit here and there. Overall, it's been an okay day. But you don't have to have a man to be happy, you all. And I'm not saying don't don't desire a man. I want to get remarried. I want to I wanna be sitting on this earth all crusty by myself. But at what cost? You know, what cost? Am I just going to have some stranger come into my space and be unsafe or pay for a plane ticket somewhere. I don't have to do that. You're a beautiful woman. Remember that you are. You're beautiful. 
you are beautiful. I don't care what race you are, what size you are, how you wear your hair, if it's not your hair, how, you know, whatever. Remember, you're beautiful. And when you know without a shadow of a doubt who you are and whose you are, you start making better choices. I feel empowered taking care of myself. You know what I'm saying? Doing my little facial regimen that I do, journaling, meditating, doing these videos for you. I was feeling, I was in my feelings a little bit. And I said, let me do a video for other people to know. So they'll know that I lost my mom just like them. And I know today is a, a tough day. And I got over 700 some views off that video. And I did do it for views, but I did it to help somebody else. Sometimes when you feel in some kind of way in your feelings, it's nice to get out of your feelings and help and show love to somebody else. But you got to show love to yourself. How are you going to get married and love a guy when you don't even love yourself? You don't know yourself. Think about that. And it's not fair to that guy for you to manipulate him and expect for him to sell along and be your everything. When you say he's going to make you happy, when you're down, he's going to bring you up. Yeah, they can do that. I, my last guy did that for me sometimes when I was sad. He knew what to say. I could talk to him. But I couldn't put everything on the poor man. He has his own kids and family and everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get to know yourself. And it's empowering. And once you do this stuff, raise your self-esteem, that's when the guys going to start coming. They're going to know, look at that woman. That lady don't play. That lady has good self-esteem. I like her. She is. She a bad woman. I like something about her. Something about her. So... That's what you want. You don't want to be the damsel in distress. Yeah, a little bit we do. Damsel in distress is good little. But you don't want to be buying tickets, airplane tickets. You don't want to be paying rent for men. You don't want to be giving them your car keys. Come on, ladies. Don't do that. Don't just open your legs just because. And you don't know. I'm going to have needs. I'm not going to go to sex. I'm not going to be a sex therapist on here because I have my own thoughts on that. Before I before I do that with some random, I don't do. I'm not doing that. No, it's other things you can do. Y'all feel me? It's other things you can do. Take care of yourself. Take care. I'm not saying I am woman. Hear me roar. I don't do all that. I need a man. You know, some women. I don't need no man. I don't even. I need a man. I can't carry no heavy air conditioner. In certain things, my ex had to come over in my other place and put together this and put together that. You know, we had that this type of relationship. He came in. Fix some of my stuff. Put my stuff together when I first moved in. Because I can't do it. My nephew had to put my mount my TV up. I'm not a mount TV. I don't say I don't need no man. I need a man. Not for stuff like that. But we need each other. We do. But at what cost? I'm not buying no plane tickets. I'm not paying your rent. All that stuff. No, I don't need to do that. And I don't expect no guy to pay my rent. But I do expect a man to be a gentleman towards me because I'm going to be a lady towards him. High self-esteem, you all. All right, I could go on for an hour on this topic. It's needed. Teach this to your young daughters and your nieces and young cousins. We got to do better, ladies. We done fell off. We done fell off and we too beautiful. We too smart. We too funny. We too sophisticated for this. You got to believe it. Then you'll receive it. Don't have that fear that you're not going to meet nobody. You are. You are. But you want to meet them. When you're in a healthy and a better place. All right, you all. Enough fussing. Auntie, you got to go. I'm my friend to call me. Got to go see what's up. Okay, you all. Take care. I hope I helped you. Drop me comments now. Let me know what you think. If it's something else I could say or do to help you, I, I am here to do that. I am Tammy. Middle name, Sharice Walker. From outside of Chicago. Born and raised in Chicago. And I'm here to help you. Owner of Dreams Are Reality. Take care, you all. God bless. Be, be cool now. All right. Bye-bye.